So I want to say thank you on behalf of my mom and my mother, mother-in-law. Um, I want to thank you all so very much for uh, telling them happy birthday. Tell them happy birthday. You all made two old ladies very happy. And we are excited about that. We're excited about that. My husband is on the way. And the, the show today, I'm going to have you all to call in. Okay, so go ahead and take the number down, 850-205-1410. That's 850-205-1410. We want you to go ahead, uh, get ready to call in. I love the show today. Today's show is entitled, The Hand That Rocked the Cradle. Rule the world. Y'all heard that before? The hand that rocks the cradle ruled the world. And I'll tell you how that came about. Um, I have a real, because it's so many things I would like to talk about. But today we're going to focus on our children and our parents. We're going we're gonna to talk about the village. We're going to talk about the parents, uh, the village. We're, we're going to talk about all of these things with our children. I know so many people have so much input to give. Uh, and we want to we want to talk about this. My heart is really concerned about our children, um, uh, especially in the house, especially in their home. Uh, I have a real concern about the children in their homes. So we're going to talk about that. Um, uh, I, I am qualified to talk about that. I have my own daycare, uh, after school program, summer camp, um, sixteen godchildren, uh, nieces, nephews. Uh, I worked with the Department of Children and Family Services for 21 years. Uh, I was a protective service counselor, a foster care counselor. Uh, I trained foster care parents. Um, I also was a parent advocate. I went to the court, sat on panels, uh, did a lot of discussion, did a lot of research uh, in, in children. And then I was raised by two great parents. And I know that we're all a different but there's a common uh, denominator that I believe that we all should have. And so we're, we're going to discuss it. And I want you to call in. We, we want to have a great discussion. I'm going to go ahead and do the prayer. Father, we thank you for the show. And we ask you to bless the listener. Bless our children. God, give us uh, even greater strategies of how to help parents and how to help children. We're living in the last and evil days, and our children shall be uh, reserved. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Okay, back to the hand that rocked the cradle, ruled the world. T tell you how this show c comes about. Um, I have a couple of, of my after schoolers, a um, couple of young people that I know who really don't like going home. And they say the reason why they don't like going home because when they go home, their parents don't talk to them, their mom don't talk, or their dad don't talk. Or there's always excuses why they can't get involved and all of that. So we, we want to get on. All right, I like that. Carla, you're on the air. Hi, this is Sarah Anderson. How are you? I am doing very well, Mother Anderson. How are you? I am excellent. Oh, that's a great thing. And as you know, we're, we're talking about uh, parents' involvement in their child life. And you know that I believe that uh, one of the greatest investments that a parent can make is spending time with their child. Talk to me. Yes, I, I was sharing, um, actually going to um, Pastor Judy's church, and I was sharing on Sunday school that um, I took the challenge that was given to us for the show to have parents meet to be more involved in our children's school. And so I changed my schedule, and one day a week, <laughs> I'm always there on the children. They know me as bad mom. They come to the club, kisses and everything. And I'm able to, to really share in their lives and things that they have shared with me because it's so comfortable with me. And then just being that, that, that extra adult that just in case maybe they don't want to share with their parents or maybe with the teacher, they, they find me as a confidant. And, and it, it, it's been very eye-opening for me uh, because I had no idea. Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm so glad you got involved because you're a single parent raising a, uh, how, how old is your son? Um, he's 12 and he's 13 in August. 
raising a, a 12 year old, almost a 13 year old single mom, doing a fantastic job with him. He's very active in church. Um, Y'all got to see him dance. He wanted to play the trumpet. She went and bought him a trumpet and she got it. And, and my thing is this, parents have to, and I love what you said, you change your schedule so you can be a part of his life. I think that is phenomenal. So parents, one of the things you may have to do, you may have to change your schedule so you can show up for your child. I have my, I have my t-shirt that says show up for you. And, and I'm getting ready. I'm in the process of doing another one that says show up for your child. So show up for your children. And another one that's saying showing up for me. Okay. Uh, so y'all, we, but our children, listen, listen, y'all, as mother Anderson said, she changed her schedule. So she could be a part of her child's life. But not only did she become a part of his life, they made her the band mother. And y'all got to know Mother Anderson. Well, she, she's lit. She's lit. She's lit. Mama, that means that she's excited. She's on, on fire. And so that's what we have to do. You have to be a part. Because I'm going to tell you, if you don't change your schedule, somebody else will. Somebody else will. Okay. Thank you so very much, Mother Anderson, for calling. Thank you. Thank you. And y'all, that's what it's that's what it's about, y'all. Because at home, when you're at home, um, I made a statement on f Facebook and I said this. You got some children who are home with two parents, and those are some lonely children. Because the parent are not spending time with their children. Listen, they don't just need you to be a provider. You need to sit down and talk with your child. Ask them how they day. And if they just say, "Call you on the air," thank you for calling. Well, yes. The main thing about a parent, being a parent, is giving your child your attention. Yes. You, have, you don't have a life; your life is your child. Okay. People have to remember that. I spend time on the baseball field and everything with my son. He's a college graduate now. <laughs> yes. Yes. God yes. God can. You can. I'm his first influence. I wouldn't allow anybody else to influence him. He was scared. Yeah, and and I'm sure, and I'm sure you started that at as a young age. Mm -hmm. At four years old, he would, I would be cooking, and he would just be doing work. <laughs> <laughs> and see, and, and 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 I love that y'all because now he's in college, and she's still on the field. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and and because the <laughs> oh, okay, I was in. Oh, you got new kids now. Grand grandkids. Yeah, but see, Everybody's child is my child. I don't care. yeah, and that's the way it should. I mean, and, and y'all, it takes a village. It takes a village. It yes. takes a village. But listen to me. The villagers can't be the most important part of your child's life. It takes a village. But it takes uh, the, the parents to be the lead. You, you, you are the lead in that child's life. You, you have to be there. You, you have to sit and make time for your child. Thank I you. I did not take a second job because I had to spend time with my child. I love it. No, I needed the money. But I did not sacrifice him. Oh. For the wealth of the world. I was going to do that. Ooh. Now you just said a mouth. You just said a mouthful. <laughs> y'all, y'all, y'all better hear me. And this is. Thank you so very much for calling. I greatly appreciate I you. Know this is Anna. My name is Madre. Huh? Else. Uh, thank you, Anna. <laughs> I love you. I love you. And, and y'all, Carla, you're on the air. Yes. How you doing, Pastor Judy? I'm doing very well. I just uh, was just sitting there listening to some of the, the two callers that called in about the church. That's just a good topic that you don't be lying up for this, but a lot of things are going around in our world today. Parents just ain't being parenting no more. They're on the same level with the church. Okay. People can be more involved, like you said, and not just in their school, but you if you're doing it at home, I can't do it with it, you know, with children. Right. You need more parenting than to our children. We're lacking of being parenting to our children's lives. And then you can be involved. But you got to know how to parent. A lot of us have been uh, not taught how to teach our children the right way because they haven't got it in themselves. Right. And a lot of people want to point out to other people, reach out and say what the world and other folks ain't doing. But we have to do it. Your whole 
That's right. It is. That's right. And I agree with you 100%. Thank you so very much for calling. And one of the things I want to say, because you're a man, and I, I, I love to see men, women, get involved in your child's life. Get involved. And, and it start at home. It start. Sit with okay, everybody know I love the way we was raised. I, I do. I love the way uh, my parents raised us. Thank you for calling, Kent. Uh, caller, thank you so very much. Um, okay. hey, Prophet, Prophet Pace, and to everybody, thank y'all. This is this is this is the thing right here. My mom and dad, we thought we were rich, y'all. You know why? And I found out later that we weren't. But what they did was they. Every Friday night, we went out to eat as a family. We went to eat as a family. While we were home, we ate at the table as a family. We did. And we talked. We, we were so silly. They laughed with us until one of the evangelists came over. She was one of the major evangelists in our city. And she came over. She said, I can't tell who the children are. I can't, no, I can't tell who the parents are because they sat and they laughed with us. Your, 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 parent, your children should be able to be silly with you, okay? They should be able to sit down and you should all, all should be able to talk about life. You should be able to, to ask. You should be able to ask, how was your day? And when they just say, fine, that's not good enough. What was the best part of your day? What challenge did you have in your day today? When I pick up my after schoolers, people know not to call me between 3 and 3.30. That's their time. When we're riding in that van... I'm talking to my after schoolers. And one of my parents told me that her little girl told her, told them, her dad said it too, that the greatest gift she had for Christmas was all her Christmas gifts and Pastor Judy. Because you know why? Because Pastor Judy get involved in their life. Okay? Parents, it take all of it take all of us, but it takes you. It is not the church's responsibility. It is not just school responsibility. It is not the legislative responsibility to put that foundation in your child's life. It is it's you. Yes, it's going to take a village, but they should know. They, they should not have these little girls. My, my goddaughters, the one who will call, and Cameron for show, and, and the carriers, those are two who will call their godmother. They're going to talk. We talk about every. We talk. My, my goddaughter, she came home and, and, and one of her classmates were, was, was gay. And she said she was my friend first. So do I not keep her as my friend because she's gay? Because I know in the church we don't do this and we don't do that. I said, if she's your friend, she's your friend. And then we had to talk about friendship. Do y'all understand? We have to talk about but she and then she went home and talked to her mom and dad. She was able to talk to them. But she talked to me. Some some of your children are not gonna come and just talk to you about anything. You you make it you're not there. You're there, but you're not there. They they got to be able to trust that you would talk, they can talk to you without and, and can I say this my mother would not let me call her my friend I gave my mama a card one time that said best friend my mama gave it back to me told me to get her a mama card I said get you a mama card I said but you are my friend she said I'm your mother y'all when I turned 50 my mother allowed me to get her a card that says mother and friend y'all know Irma y'all know mother Irma she does not play she said she's my mother and she trained us, y'all. She sat down and talked with us. And we all ate different food. It wasn't like, you're going to eat what I put before you. She didn't do, they did not do that. I didn't like certain things. My sisters didn't like certain things. They did not force us to eat what we didn't like. You're going to eat. And I know, and I, like I said, some households are different. Because some parents, you're going to eat what I put before you, or you'll starve to death. Well, that's not because all of us was different. They treated us differently, but we had one common denominator. They had rules. They had regulations. They had things that was going to be, but they were there. My dad, my dad, five girls, my dad gave each one of us individual attention. 
five girls, and he gave us individual. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't marry Pastor Mandrell because he could buy me stuff. My daddy bought me stuff. I didn't have to ride in no fine car because he was driving a fine car. My mom and dad had fine, fine cars. My brother loved on us as girls. My brother told us how to don't let no boys play no tricks on you. Even though my brother was, a, you know, but he wasn't gonna let us be. He wasn't gonna let us be played. He taught us how to have respect. My husband used to take me to Brown Derby and stuff. I went, but I've been eating steaks. My parents, my my dad would cook steak. They would set the table at the house. I didn't have. I wasn't rude. And talking about pretty, all five of us know we look good. Do y'all understand? All five of us. You know why? Because every single day, my mom and dad told us how pretty we were. My brother told us how beautiful we were. My uncles had come to the village. My uncles, our grandfather, our aunties. Do, do you understand? It was a family. But what if they did it or not? When we left 3201, 3201 is our address. And we've been living in that house for over 50 years. The same house. The same house. But that was our house. That was my mom and dad told us. We had six children. Listen to this now. Six children, five TVs. Six children, five TVs. And we shared room. Five TVs. So we would not argue. They, they taught us how to share. We learned that from home. They taught us how to share. They taught us how to lose. My dad said, Judy, you're not going to win all the time. You won't be number one out there in the field, but you will always be number one to me. You will always be number one to daddy. My mother said, Judy, you're always number one. Do, do y'all hear this? Parents, we, you got to spend time. My mom and dad would work, and they would work hard. And they would come home, change clothes, and you know where that next place was? With us. They spent time with us. Sisters and brothers, y'all better hear me. Y'all better listen to me. Spend time with your children. I love to see parents out with their children. I love to see father playing with their sons and taking pictures with their sons. And them, the parent, the, the daughters taking pictures with their mom. And daughter saying, I can talk to my mom about anything. That's how my mother raised us. We not, we not. We, I mean, come on. You know why some of these little girls run away with with all these men? Cause they're not getting the validation at home. They're not having dinner with the family at home. So Wilbur can say, "Hey, look, I'm gonna take you to McDonald's. I'm gonna take you to Longhorn." Man, we'd have been in so many Longhorns by the time we turned twelve. We'd have been in so many, and they took us to the finest restaurants. That's why we thought we was rich. But we found out later on, my mother told us how to do it. Plan. P-L-A-N. Plan. P-L. Anthony Beam. That's my mom, Godson. You know, he's on here. I have so many people on here. They know I'm not lying from the Wesley family. That this is how they raised us. And parents, you have to do that. You have to do that. And it's not about being rich and having all this money. Can I tell you something? Yes, your children are going to love the Jordans. They're going to love that. And I'm saying this. I'm not telling you not to buy them. If you can afford them, buy them. I mean, you know, ain't no sin. Can't nobody tell you how to spend your money. That's another thing. We always trying to tell people how to spend their money. They spend their money the way they want to spend their money. That's not our responsibility. But my thing is don't go buy no 280 pair $280 pair of Jordan, then you can't pay your light bill because it ain't my responsibility to pay it. Bam, there it is. Okay, y'all understand what I'm saying? M my, mother taught, my mother and father taught us this. And, and, and Pastor in here now, and he can tell you, I've never been a hard up woman. Never. And when he found out he didn't have to tell me how beautiful I was when we were dating, he didn't spend all his time talking about you so pretty. You're so pretty. That's what, that wasn't my interest. But when that man opened his mouth and wisdom came out, and I realized how smart he was and how he can make things happen, how he can turn things up, so I'm like, that's what I fell in love with. I fell in love with the mind of Jeremiah Matthew Mandrell. 
the mind and spirit of it. Because my prayer was, God, give me a man that was smarter than me. Because y'all know I'm smart. I know everything. So I had to have a man who knew more than me and for real. Who could pronounce words that I couldn't pronounce. That's what I needed. Who can who I can read something and he understand it better than I understand. That's the kind of man I wanted. I wanted a man that loved God more than he loved me. Okay? That's what I needed. That's what I wanted. I didn't need no man that's going to always tell me how pretty and fine I am. A man that just want to have sex all the time. I didn't need that. Hmm. Only. <laughs> Had to. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, because people know me, they know me. <laughs> I just leave it like that. People who know me know me, okay? But you got to spend time. I, that's what I want you to know. I've had people to say that their father was a provider, but he wasn't there. And when he came home, they couldn't say anything to him. Man, my daddy was a police officer, Brown Sheriff officer. And my daddy came home from work. He took off that uniform, took a shower, and came in the den and talked to us. And we played. People say I'm silly. I get it from my family. Y'all should come eat dinner with us. That's why I like to watch Dot D family on. And I always tell him that I was disappointed. I think it was Thanksgiving. And Pastor them, no, I'll be waiting on Dot D. I'll be waiting on their family because they're going to sing and they just is crazy. And they put it on Facebook and I wait on it. I like stuff like that. You know, you don't have to be rich. Come on. That's rich right there. That's wealthy. That's wealth right there. Who? That's more than money can buy. Y'all can call in 850-205-1410. Everybody giving me hearts. Y'all share this. I think this is good to share. Just share it. Share it. Share it. You know, but spend time. Sit down and listen. Okay. Can I tell you this? I'm going to tell you what I did. We went to eat. And I was at a restaurant. It was five. It was a family of five at the table eating. All five of them, the mama, the daddy, and the three children, was on their cell phone. Wasn't nobody talking to each other. Not one person. But they all on their cell phone. So I went over to them and I said, excuse me. I said, are you all family? And they were like, yes, ma'am. I said, you the daddy? Yes. I said, you the mama? Yes. And y'all the children? And they started smiling. But everybody put the phone down. And this is what I said. I said, I'm going to pay for y'all lunch. I'm going to pay for your meal. I want you to put your phone up and talk. I said, because I'm watching y'all. African-American family. I said, I'm watching y'all. And I want y'all to spend time with each other. I said, number one, this is awesome. I said, sir, you in the home with, with, with this young man and, and, and your daughters? And he said, uh, yes, ma'am. I said, wow. I said, I promise y'all, y'all can talk. I said, if I don't see y'all talking, I'm going to come back and join y'all at y'all table. Because I promise you, I can start a conversation with y'all. But guess what happened? I didn't end up paying for the meal. The manager paid for it. He said, wow, I know what you just, you, do you know them? I said, no, I don't know them. That's what I do. I love families. I love families. And some people say single, single moms can't raise boys. I disagree. They can, they can train them. But hear me, they can train them. But if she's a single mom, it had to be a daddy somewhere. She ain't had a baby by herself. Oh, okay. So we can't have the, what you call it? The artificial, artificial insemination. insemination. Okay. Even if that happened, a man, still had, to a man still had to do it. Yeah. And so this is what I want to help us with. Single mom, if you got some boys that you're raising by yourself, if you're a member of a church and the pastor's a good man, and you got some good men in there, find a man that can influence that, those boys. All single boys don't turn out to be feminine men. I mean, raised by um, single women. Okay? You got some men who have turned out to be good men, and the foundation was laid by that mother. God has when Moses when Moses had to be put placed in that uh, river to get away from Pharaoh. You know who raised him? His mama. God is strategic. But men, women, girls need men influence as well. So does the boys. 
men and women bring out the best in children. Uh uh, I'm about to turn a big corner right now. I'm about to turn one right now. If per adventure you are not with the with the father and women, I'm talking to you now. Cause y'all know how my mother is, and she instilled this into us that a wise woman build a house. And a fool tell it down with her own hand. Listen to me, women. Listen to me. Listen, Linda. Listen. Do not talk about that man in a negative way to them children. Build your house. If, if, if you think he's no good, don't you dare tell that to that boy or girl. Mm-hmm. 850-205-1410. Yeah, don't you do that. Well, he don't give no support. He don't do this. Well, you know that was a possibility when you were married. Mm -hmm. This real talk. That was a possibility that he wasn't going to do it anyway. My mama say, my mother used to teach us before we got married. She said, you go out there, he going to be in love with you till he make you pregnant. When he make you pregnant, he, gonna, he ain't going to love you no more. So you think about that. She's saying, you're going to raise that child by yourself if you have to. God, I'm not going to do it. And guess what she did? She helped. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just want us to, I just, and, 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 and if it's a father, don't, don't, don't y'all do that to those children. Call her, you're on the air. Hey, Pastor Bowie, how you doing? I'm fine, Pastor Bowie. How are you? Thank you, Pastor Boo, so very much for listening. I greatly appreciate it. And listen, families, thank you so very much for calling. Listen, Pastor Boo is correct. Sometimes, y'all, we, we just got to get our finances in check. We do. Sometimes we can't spend. My mother said she taught us not to want for what she couldn't buy. <laughs> she said what they couldn't afford, they taught us not to want it. That's wisdom. So what she and my daddy couldn't afford, and, and now I know the trick of it. We didn't ask for it because she never put it before us. And so we always ask for what, she, what we can afford. Hear me, families? We got to save our children. They're talking about mental illness. You know what's wrong with some of these children? Even work, working in foster care, seeing some of these children in these families. You know what's wrong with them? They're lonely. They're, they're angry. They're hateful. Why? Because they're longing for the parent. And you know what happened in the foster, with a lot of my foster children and children who were put in protective services, they longed for the parent who was absent. They longed for that parent who wasn't there. I ain't got no money to do that. You don't need money to show attention to your child. Go to Lake Ella. Draw a family portrait. Come on. Take a family picture. One of the things I used to teach people, if I walk in the house and there's no pictures of your children, there's no pictures of your family, you're not involved in your family. Man, they, you could tell these parents, they be bragging about their children. Children 50 years old, and they tell me, you see my child, let me show you a picture. You think they're going to show you a baby picture. And they showing you somebody 50. Because <laughs> they're proud of them. My mom, you go to my mom's house, boy, we got pictures everywhere. You come to my house, I got pictures of everybody. Okay? But sit and talk to these children. Talk about racism. Have the conversation, have the hard conversation. My goddaughter's 14, we talk about sex right now. Right now. 
She loved boys. And so we talking about sex. Oh, call her you on the air. Call her you. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Hanson. Thank you so very much for calling. Carla, you on the air. I'm doing very well. How you doing? Hey, Sephora. Uh-huh. 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 Mm-hmm. 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 Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. That's right. And I That's right. That's right. You're right. That's right. You're, you're exactly, you are correct. And you do a great job with your children and your awesome youth leader. We are honored to have you at Life Changers. And we thank you for what you do with your children because you are there. And we see you. You got three boys and a girl, and you are there in their life. Uh, they're active in church. And, y'all, that's another thing. These children are a gift to us. They are a gift to us. That's right. That's right. That's, you're so glad. We're so glad to have you. Keep, <clears throat> keep doing a great job. Amen. Amen. Thank you so very much for calling. And y'all, that's what it's about. And listen, parents, listen, listen. Some of y'all are doing a great job. Some of us just need to improve. And it is okay. It is okay. You know, I hope this show today help you say, you know what? I don't really spend enough time with my child. You know, and, and, and we know everybody is busy. We, we know that. And, and we have to work and you have to do that. We understand that. Put your children in your schedule. Ain't no problem with that. Put them on the calendar. And when you do that, don't let anybody or anything take that time away. You know, I learned that from Dr. Asha. Dr. Asha told me that I needed to put some time in for me. And so on my calendar, she said, block out that time. And put meeting. And that, that time right there is for you. She said, don't let anybody disturb that time. That's your time. Okay? Because we don't do that either. We're so busy and so busy and so busy and so busy. We don't have time for our families. We don't have time for our children. We don't have time for ourselves. Slow yourself down and love your children. Love your children. My husband and I don't have any biological children, but because we have spent so much time, we have we have Carolyn and Ron and, and that, all all these only Priscilla, everybody, everybody, who are so concerned about us, they and they 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 take care of us too. They're they're there, and, but you know what we make sure we do? We give them time. We we make sure we give time to them. Oh yes, we do. 
Because we're getting old. Pastor already 60. <laughs> when all that gray hands, though, everywhere we go, they give us senior citizen. And he said, I'm going to shave it. Uh-uh, don't shave it. That's a blessing. It's a blessing. Blessing. <laughs> senior citizen. Okay? Listen to me again, parents. Show up to your activities that your children have. You know? They may just be the water boy. But if you go and you clap for them, Man, that, that that it just it just means something. It it really does. It just means <laughs> Prophet Pay <Pace> said older. <laughs> you know, it just means something when your child know that my parent is gonna be there. My mom is gonna show up, my dad is gonna show up. It it, it means something. It means something. When I look on Facebook and I see these men playing with their children, I see them taking a trip somewhere. I remember one time, Dot D, we had to, um, he was going to New York with his sons. And I wasn't going to be there that Tuesday. And he was like, ah, oh, Pastor Judy, can we, can we record earlier? Because I won't be back because I'm going to be with my, I told him, just play, just, I mean, because he was trying to rush to get me on. But he had to go, he, and he just wanted to go be with his children. Y'all, that says a lot. That means something to me. Wow. To have these mothers, I mean, just play house. Well, anybody play house anymore with your little children? Parents, do you teach your children how to cook? I mean, come on. Do, do you teach them how to cook? Do the boys know how to make up the bed? Do they know how to make up beds? Do they know how to cook? Um, do the little girls know how to cook? Do your children know how to iron clothes? That's right. That's right, Felicia. You know, we got to make this stuff happen, y'all. And as Saporia said, watch your word. I am 59, and my mama and my daddy has never, ever called any of their children stupid, dumb, lazy. She never said, you're just like your old daddy. And he never said, well, yes, he did. He told me, he said, you just like your mama. Be careful. Hide from her. <laughs> Okay, but they, they never degraded us, ever. Even when we made bad grades, they wanted to find out what was the problem, what's going on, you know, what, what's going on. Parents, if your children need tutoring, get them tutoring. Don't be afraid that they don't know how to do math. Find a good math teacher. Then that McBride can teach anybody math for a small fee, Okay. Yeah, if they have problem reading, you got reading programs around here. You got people who are doing things. Invest in your children. And as Pastor Boyd just said, save your money. Get your credit together. Some of y'all, some of y'all done got your income tax, and it's going to be gone in two months. I promise you ain't investing nothing. $10,000 is going to be gone by, by the third month. You ain't rich. You're not rich. You still got a life to live. Invest in them. Oh, man. No. Buy groceries. Marvin said two days. You know, buy groceries. Put it up. Uh-uh. I'm about to turn another big heart. I'm about to turn, I'm about to turn one right now. Get some life insurance on your children. Go get some life insurance, parents. Because GoFundMe is almost outdated. Go get some of your life insurance on your children. Go get a $10,000, $15,000 policy on your children. Get a whole life somewhere. Tory Forbes, he's New York life. Call him up somewhere. Call Mr. Tory up and get some life insurance. We got people out there, April. We got people out there that can help you financially plan your stuff. Get some life insurance. And get some life insurance on you. So while you're around here buying all these shoes, like I said, I don't have any problem with that. That's your money. But get some life insurance. Get some life insurance. Pay your, pay your light bill for a couple of months. Pay your rent for a couple of months. Do that. And then take your children on a, on a cheap vacation somewhere. Take them to Disney World. That's not cheap, but take them somewhere. Take your children somewhere. Play with your children. 
Pray with your children. P-R-A-Y. Teach your boys to be young boys and your girls to be young girls. Put them in debiton. We got AKAs and, and the Deltas and the Zetas. And put them children somewhere. Invest in your children. My God, Dr. Cameron, her mama going to make sure she in everything. And this week, she's a page of the House of Representatives. My sister Tanya said, get Gerber life. Come on, get, put some insurance on these children. It is not the church's responsibility to give your child or your family a funeral. That's your responsibility to pay Richardson and Tillman, Strong and Jones. Go to the park. Have a picnic. Well, don't, they said that meant, um, picnic meant they put y'all like that, then they pick a, so... Have a family eating at the park. Grill some hot dogs on the grill. Now go to St. George Island, Tallahassee. Go to Panama City. Have a pool party. If you don't live in an apartment complex, find somebody who does. That's what I did. Find some. I don't have a swimming pool. But now one of our members, they have a swimming pool. And they happen to be our son and daughter. So I told them we'd come to their house and have a pool party. And guess what they did? They opened up their house. No. I hope this happens somebody. Well, I know it is. And I know the Lord put this on my mind to do it. There's so much I want to I want teach your children to be honest children. Yeah. Teach your children and, 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 and I'm just being honest, y'all, you know. Teach your children grooming. Teach them how to take a bath and put on deodorant. Yeah, a social outing with your family. Yeah, not that time. <laughs> You know, teach your children how to take a bath. Teach your children how to iron the clothes. Teach them how to look. Man, my daddy would pop, my, well, not my dad, my mom would pop us in the back of our neck. We talking to people with our head down. Hold your head up and look them in your eye. What are you mumbling for? Open your mouth and talk. Mr. Bowman told me to stay right there. <laughs> yeah. Teach the young men how to iron their clothes. Uh-uh. Here come another one, big one. Pastor Andrea. Come another, you better make sure my car's still out there when I when I leave, because I'm I'm saying some rough stuff. Okay, parents, sometimes boys don't like to take bath. Make sure they take a bath. Okay, here we come again, Daddy. And you so you might have to teach them, and it is okay. Teach them how to groom themselves. Minister Boatman said the Kingsman Club. Oh, those men be sharp too. They're sharp. Teach them how to, I like that he went to the to school, teach them how to tie a tie. If they don't want to wear it, teach them how to wear the, the collar. Every son should have at least three collar shirts. Teach these men how, how to wear a collar shirt. These young boys, how to iron their shirts, how to wear a coat. And I notice when men sit down, I think y'all unbutton, you unbutton your coat, right? You unbutton your coat. When you stand up, you button your coat, something like that. Teach them how to do that. Teach your children to say, yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yes, sir. No, sir. Teach the girls how to comb their hair. Uh, uh, here we go. Teach the young girls and the men and the young boys, always keep your hands lotion. Keep your feet lotion. <clears throat> keep your nails clean. That comes from home. That comes from home. And mom and dad, it takes time. Or big mama. And sometimes mothers and fathers, I understand you have to work. I understand that. But at least just, just come and say hello. Come in the bedroom. If you get off late, come in the bedroom, even if they sleep, and kiss them. Kiss them on the forehead. Yeah, my dad used to get off late at night, but he peeped in every last one of those rooms to make sure his children were okay. He came home on break. My mom ran her daycare. My mom was a nurse. I mean, things happen. Teach those girls how to wear a slip under their, under their clothes. Don't compromise. Oh, yeah. I mean, come on. I mean, this is what you teach them how to brush their teeth. When I told them to brush it. Did you show them to brush it? Parents, and you know when the teeth not brushed? I mean, my mother used to say, oh, come here, let me see. Did you brush your teeth? Yes, ma'am. Smile. It's gritty. Go back in there. 
They should come in there and show us. Take that toothbrush. Go up and down. Go this way. Go that way. She'll get the toothbrush and brush her toothbrush and brush her teeth to teach us. She taught us how to clean the tub, how to clean the toilet, how to make up our bed. I didn't learn that at church. I didn't learn that at school. That's not their responsibility. All of everybody got a different responsibility. Every entity in the village has a different responsibility. And I heard somebody say that our parents not learn. Well, we can't fault them. We can't fault these young 15, 13, 14, and 15 year olds that they're having babies if they're not being taught at home how to keep their legs closed. Mama can't bring everybody in the house and think that their child is not going to do the same thing. You done slept with Tom, Dick, and Harry. You think she's not going to do it? She's watching you. He's watching you. Ain't this real talk? That's real talk. We're going to help. Let's help. They seeing the, the men teach, seeing the, they, your, your young boy seeing you with bring a young girl home every other, a different girl home every other day. What you think he going to do? <laughs> My dad is a man. My dad is a man. Why's your dad a man? Me and my daddy got Linda, Brenda, Hinda, Brenda. No. Teaching them to be men. And then they grow up to be good husbands. And sometimes divorce happens. Listen to me. Sometimes divorce happens. And when a divorce happens, don't you dare. Now you can do what you want. I'm suggesting. This is my suggestion. Don't you dare degrade that other parent. To that child. I hate that. And maybe y'all couldn't get along. For whatever reason. Divorce happened for a whole bunch of reasons. But to those children. Don't you ever tell them their mama this. Or their daddy this. Because that's still their parent. Y'all can say I got so much going on in my head. So much going on in my mind. So much. I asked a police officer. Why don't many shooting a lot of our black children, why aren't they shooting up schools and stuff? He said, because we don't, we, don't, we don't value guns like that. But at a young age, they're sitting down teaching them how to use guns. Like and it's okay. They, they hunt and they do this. And so they become fascinated with guns. But in our homes, we don't teach much of nothing anymore. So they don't pass in school. We don't even listen to our children read. In my, in my after school program, they have to read. And they have to read aloud. And when they're missing words, we, we uh, at one time, uh, the kids were laughing. And I told them no. And I gave them the basic snack. If they laugh at somebody who, who couldn't read, they got the basic snack. snack. Because I give extra snacks. They got the, I don't take snacks from the children. They just got a basic one. But this is the thing. Read out loud. And when they mess up a word and they get it again, everybody clap. Everybody clap. Man, we got to teach our children. We got some good children. They just need the parent to be involved. Okay? I'm a good godmother. I really am. And we don't just give gift. You know, you, you do give gift as, as godparents. You do. But that's not the biggest thing. Hear me, godparents. Your responsibility is to help these parents raise these children in the right way. Your, your responsibility is to be a great influence. And hear me, parents, don't just get anybody to be your children's godparent. Get somebody of influence, somebody with some integrity, somebody with some respect and honor. Someone who can help you with your child. That's a way to invest. Okay. That's an investment. Parents, that's an investment. Getting godparents is an investment in your child's future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Teach your children to pray. When we were growing up, now I lay me down to sleep. I prayed to the Lord. At a certain age, mom said, now say something else. <laughs> now teach them to pray. Teach your children by precept and example how to praise the Lord. And y'all can say what you want to. All for all of my black people on here, I know I got a lot of people on here, black and white, but for my black people, God has been our answer all our life. From great-grandmama to great-great-grandmama, he is our life. And don't you dare 
not get into the Lord now. I can't tell you what to do. That dare is that dare is a suggestion. It's not a you better do it. No. What is the gist of this conversation today? Y'all could have called in. I guess everybody enjoying me talking. You know, what is the gist of this conversation today? My prayer is that every parent who's listening to me, and I want y'all to share this. Please share. Please share. But every parent who's listening to me, that you will get into um, your child's life. Hey, and do me. Thank you, Priscilla. Please subscribe to the Real Talk with Judy YouTube channel. Okay? Go to the YouTube channel and please subscribe to it. And play this and other shows at your convenience and to share with others. So please go to my Real Talk with Judy YouTube channel and play uh, and, and subscribe to it. Please subscribe to it. Y'all, my, my, my heart is for our children. I see so much involved with so many children. Okay? I absolutely love children. I do. My family wasn't perfect, but I thought we were. <laughs> you know? I, I really do. Subscribe. Thank you. Subscribe. <laughs> Thank you, Priscilla. Okay? I thought we had a perfect family. I'm going to tell you why. Six of us, my mom and dad would sit down and talk with us. They would allow us to be silly. They would allow us to be ourselves. They did. And if you look at all six of us now, we're all absolutely fantastic children. We've made mistakes. Let me hear you. Let me help you, parents. Guess who was there to help us up? Our parents. Our parents. My mama told us we got, uh, if we got pregnant before we got married, she's going to put us in a in an unwed, and we got pregnant before we finished school, high school. She put us in an unwed mother home. And she said she ain't coming to visit us. We took her for real. And you know why? Because she taught us the value of not getting pregnant before marriage. Okay? They told my brother, you get a girl married before you finish high school, you're going to take care of that girl. That's good teaching. Talk to your children about the hard things in life. Talk to your children how to deal with racism. Talk to your sons and daughters about how to pull up their pants. Not to wear flip-flaps and socks out to the store. That's prison stuff. Put some shoes on your feet. You know? Just some little principal thing. Keep your son haircut. And if he wear that crazy hair up there, and that's what you allow him to wear, leave it, keep it clean and taped up. Okay? Keep it clean and taped up. Present yourself reasonable. Teach him how to read the Bible. Teach them respect. I don't let no children. They get in my car. They tell me, huh? Well, look, one of my, I picked up one of my little girls. She's in sixth grade. She get in the car. Tell me, hey, Judy. I said, get out of my car. She said, what, the, what did I do? What did I do? I said, my name is not Judy. What's your name? I said, to you, my name is Miss Judy, always. You don't have the authority to call me Judy. You're not old enough. My name is Miss Judy. She got back in. Every day she get in. Hello, Miss Judy. Yeah. Teach them respect. They respect each other. And I told them this, and I'm, I'm getting ready to close, but I told them this. They have a right to be mad. It is okay to be angry. Teach your children that. It's okay to be angry, but it's not okay to be angry and to take your anger out of hitting someone else. I am a believer. If they hit you, hit them back. I'm a believer of that. Y'all can say what you want, okay? My daddy told us, don't you let nobody beat you. Because if, if, if you come home with five scratches, they better went home with their face scratched up. That's what my daddy told us. But by the time, y'all know I like to talk, so by the time I finish talking, they don't want to fight me no more. They be gone. You talk too much, Judy. So I hope this show today would have encouraged parents, godparents, Grandparents, everybody, listen to your children. Just get involved in their life, okay? Let them know they matter. You get a dollar, teach them how to save. Don't spend everything. Don't spend everything, okay? Teach your children how to save and invest. If you don't have life insurance on your children, get some life insurance. If you don't have good credit, increase your credit. Okay? I, I just want to help somebody. I just want to help somebody. 
Okay? So I love you guys. I really do. I want you to share this. Share it. Share it. Share it. Um, I'll see you in the future. Thank you, Betty Harris. Thank you. Y'all, this, this is what I do. Okay? This is what I do. I build people. That's what this show is all about. Building people. Okay? That's what it's all about. Your children will make mistakes. They will. They may mess up. But they better be able to count on mom and daddy being there. Because if mom and dad ain't there, the hand that's rocking the cradle, the hand that's feeding them, the hand that's investing and listening to them, that's the hand that's going to rule the world. I promise you. That's the hand that's going to rule. All right? All right. I love you guys. Thank you all for calling in. Uh, I want to invite you to join, meet me Sunday morning at um, Life Changers, 601 Mickey Road, Summerton Jeremy Drill is the pastor. Man, God is blessing us with some good church. Lives are being changed. Bodies are being healed and delivered. I mean, God is blessing us. Bishop John Wesley Pace said this, everybody won't have a mega church, but God want everybody to have a mega mind. I see you in the future, and you look so much better, and things are happening so much better than they are right now. That's real talk. Thank y'all so very much. Thank y'all so very much for. Thank y'all so very much for tuning in. I greatly appreciate it. Um, I really do. <clears throat> I really appreciate it. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, thank you. I, I appreciate it, everybody for tuning in. Um, and I, I really do. I have such a concern for our families, uh, for our young children, and some of y'all. They just they just want the mom and daddy. Show some love. Find you a good village. You can't do it by yourself. You can't do it by yourself. Find you a good village of people. People who can influence your children. People who can who believe the same as you do. Okay? Find some good people. Betty Harris, thank you. I appreciate you. Marvin, thank you. Everybody. Felicia, thank you so very much for all of your comments. Uh, absolutely powerful. And y'all share this for me. Share it. Share it. And go to the, um, please go to the Real Talk with Judy YouTube channel and subscribe. Please. Um, we want to get that really going big. Want people to uh, subscribe to it. Priscilla, thank you for all that you do. To everybody, thank you so very much for being on. You're right. You're right, um, Chaplain Harris. I know. They do, even the ones in prison. Am I, when, when do I come back? I miss my ladies. It seems like I've been gone a long time. When do I come back to my ladies? Yeah. I miss them. Okay. So, y'all, let's do what we can to help. Okay. All of us are part of the children's life somewhere. Let them be able to trust us. Let the parents be able to trust us. I thought it was Thursday. Okay. Let the parents be able to trust us. Okay? Let the parent be able to, to trust us. Thank you, Mother McGill. Okay? Um, and so I say to everybody, if a parent allow you into their child life, let them be able to trust you. Do not molest these children. Do not touch these children. Be a great influence to these children. All right? Hey, I love y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all. Um... And thank you so very much for listening. I am Dr. Judy, a Real Talk with Judy live radio show host. I'll be back next Tuesday at the same time. Lord, the is coming. I love you. Have a great week.